With Salat al Istikhara, there are so many misconceptions um, concerning how to pray it, when to pray it, how many times to pray this particular prayer. And it's so important, but there are so many misconceptions and misunderstandings concerning Salat al Istikhara. In Islam, when we, ever, when we make decisions and everything that we do, we always return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of everything. If there was ever a GPS system for your lives, it's Salat al-Istikhara. Because Salat al-Istikhara is divine guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him for guidance, imagine every decision that you make, inshaAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be the best for you. How many decisions have we made in the past that we now regret? Think, did we pray istikhara when we made those decisions? If we prayed istikhara when we made those decisions, we will never regret because there will be divine guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He'll guide us to that which is more appropriate and that which is best. And so that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught istikhara to the companions just like he taught the ayat of the Qur'an because of its significance and because of its importance also. And in this world, in this society in general, in every society, there are ways in which people make decisions. All these methods and ways that people use to make decisions, they're just trivial. They're just, they are of no basis, no benefit whatsoever. And it doesn't even make sense at all. One of the things that can be put together with istikhara is istishara. Istishara is consultation. You consult with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you consult with your Muslim brothers and your Muslim sisters if you are going to decide in an affair. A person will never regret if he prays istikhara and he consults with the people. You can do either one, one, one or the other first. It doesn't really uh, matter. The scholars have mentioned you can ask for advice and then pray istikhara or you can pray istikhara and ask for advice. And after that, inshaAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should just go forward with it. When we pray istikhara, you only are allowed to pray istikhara on affairs or on matters that are allowable. So you can't pray istikhara on affairs that are haram because you're not supposed to do them anyways. And you do not pray istikhara on things that are obligatory. When do you say the istikhara and how you say them? And to get the answer to this question, we have to read the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Jabir ibn Abdullahi radiallahu anhu, in which he said, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to teach us al istikhara in all our affairs, just like he taught us the Quran. And thus, istikhara is something that we are always in need of. Every we have decisions to make all the time, and sometimes we regret our decisions because we don't pray istikhara. And istikhara isn't just for marriage. No, and for any affair that you have doubts in and you don't know which one to decide. Of the Prophet ﷺ then said, he said, if one of you wants to do something, then let him make two rakas of sunnah prayers besides the obligatory prayers. So you pray sunnah prayers and then you make the istikhara and some of the scholars have said you should make the istikhara inside the prayer before you get the taslim. He makes it when he finishes the tashahud and the Salat al ibrahimiya then he makes the Salat al-Istikhara. And others have said you can say it afterwards. You say, Salaamu Alaikum. Afterwards you can make Istikhara. If he wants to, he can raise his hands and make dua. Then the Prophet wasallam said, and then say these words, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi idnika. Oh Allah, I seek consultation or decisions that you are going to make with your knowledge, فَإِنَّكَ تَعْلَمْ وَلَا أَعْلَمْ Because you know, O oh Allah, and I do not know. And وَأَسْتَقْدِرُكَ بِقُدْرَتِكَ And I ask for that you give me the ability and give me the strength.
to go forward with it by your strength. In other words, because we say that there's no strength and no might except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we say, وَأَسْأَلُكَ مِنْ فَضْلِكَ الْعَظِيمِ And we, I ask you from your great generosity or your great um, favors. فَإِنَّكَ تَقْدِرُ وَلَا أَقْدِرُ وَتَعْلَمُ وَلَا أَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتَ أَعْلَمُ الْغُيُوبِ And indeed you are the all-knowing. You are the knower of the unseen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the unseen. And part of the unseen, one of the knowledges of the unseen is something that is in the future. So anything in the future, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better than us. And so that's why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and show us the straight path and the way that will be most beneficial for us in this life and in the hereafter. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone knows the unseen and He alone knows the future and knows what will happen if we chose a particular decision. And then we say, oh, Allahumma in kunta ta'lam anna hadha al-amr. And then say, Oh Allah, if you know that this particular affair, and then in this area you mention that affair, or you mention that particular uh, deed that you want to do or not. So in this area you would say, Oh Allah, if marriage to so and so is better, or starting this business is better, then you say, Khayran li fi dini wa ma'ashi, it's better for me in this life and then hereafter, in my livelihood, wa aqibati amri, and also in the final affairs, in the end, it will be all, it will always be better for me. Faqdurhu li means. Make it possible for me. And then make it easy for me also. And then give me barakah in it. Give me blessings in it. And then after that, we say that, Oh Allah, if this particular affair is bad for me, if it's not good for me, then take me away from it and take it away from me. And then we say, Oh Allah, make possible for me all the good that is possible, and then make me pleased with the decision you have given to me. When we pray this istikhara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for us to choose the right path or to choose the right way. Some of the scholars have said you should pray it just one time. Just pray it and make your decision. Pray it and then make your decision. Make the decision according to what you think is best for you in this life and the hereafter. And even if you made the wrong decision, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to the right one. Let's say for example, you wanted to marry this particular brother or the particular sister. And you really wanted to marry her and you prayed istikhara. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely to guide you to that which is best for you. And then of course you saw her beauty or saw his uh, so and so and then you wanted to marry that particular person. And you chose that decision. And so you went forward with it. Now let's say if by marrying that person, in the end it will be bad for your deen. It will not be good for you. If that is going to be the case, even if you went forward with it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take her away. Something will happen that will cause that particular engagement or particular uh, marriage before it happens. It will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it and not allow you to marry that person. So something will happen, because why? Because we say, Oh Allah, if this particular affair is not good for me in this life or in the hereafter, take it away from me, keep it far away from me, keep me far away from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you away from it. So from this hadith, you pray it's the understanding from it is, as soon as you finish praying, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just make your decision because you have already put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, if you haven't consulted with people yet, then consult with them. Consultation is part of the istikhara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you consult this particular person. And sometimes there are times in which we are, are not able to pray istikhara. For a woman, she might be in her menses. And if she's in her menses, she cannot pray. And thus, if this is the case, some of the, the, the scholars have mentioned that if she can, if the, deci the decision can wait, then she can wait until she is able to pray and then she can pray the istikhara. Now if she has to make the decision, something that she has to make immediately, you don't have time to decide, and you only have maybe one day or a few hours, then just make a dua. Say the istikhara without the prayer. Because the istikhara itself is the dua. And the reason why we pray, because 
you know, by praying, it opens up the doors of the heavens for us. And then after that, we make the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After making dua at istikhara, you have to have in your heart the certainty, the yaqeen, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to that which is best. Because that's part of iman. And if you have that certainty, inshaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you. After prayer, of course, if you memorize the salat al the dua of istikhara, it is better for you. This is something that every Muslim should do. You have to memorize it. And if you, but if you don't memorize it, you can read from, piece of, from a piece of paper. Or after you pray, just hold up the piece of paper and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reading from the paper. And that's also permissible. And when we pray istikhara, there's another misconception that people have. They think that you have to see a dream. Or you have to pray three times or four times. Oh, if you, if you see this particular dream, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just go for it. If you don't see a dream, keep on praying. And that's what Imam al nawawi said. He mentioned that when you pray istikhara, just be sincere. And first, just pick the decision you think will be best for you in this life and in the hereafter. So you don't have to wait for a dream. You don't have to wait for somebody else's dream. Sometimes we go, oh, mother, did you, you, you wake up in the morning, mother, did you see any dream? You don't have to wait for that. You just go forward with it and put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you know the istikhara prayer, you might not realize that it was good for you until maybe in the end. In the end, you might not even realize that it will be good for you until you enter Jannah. Say, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, I made this particular decision because it was good for me. All those trials and tribulations and so forth, I am getting it right now because of the reward that you are getting, inshaAllah. So you will never regret if you pray istikhara and you consult.